Hey everybody, welcome. Let me get, let me get situated here. Ah, welcome to Stress Reset, a class all to do with helping you to metabolize and move through stress. And I'm your host, James. So hopefully you are comfortable. If not, get comfortable. You can lie down, you can sit down, you can stand, you can walk around, whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Once you're there, let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to move through some uh, practices to help regulate the nervous system, kind of open us up to a, an enhanced feeling of security and support from within. We're going to go over a few simple movements to help move stress through the body. And we're going to couple that with some awareness, mindfulness, body-centered meditation stuff today. And you are welcome to ignore and skip over any practice that you feel uh, doesn't align with you today or doesn't resonate with you. And I encourage you to remember anything that does. And you can practice this even without me, even without us. And so as we explore and play today, what feels really valuable to take with you and what feels uh, really important to sort of leave behind because not every practice is for everybody. There is no one size fits all for anything. So having said that, let's start off with a little bit of breathing today. Today we're going to practice some umbrella breath. These classes are not cumulative per se, but they certainly coincide with one another. So this is week two of this session of Stress Reset. So if we go over anything today, especially as we get into some of the tension and trauma release exercises, we go over anything today that makes you feel like, huh, did I miss something here? Maybe you go back and visit those first two videos. Um, but I wanna bring you along as easily as possible. So the breathing technique today is umbrella breath. If this doesn't work for you, do whatever breathing technique works for you, even if it's just simply breathing. What I want you to do is imagine your spine as sort of the cane of an umbrella. And your rib cage is the umbrella portion. It's the fabric portion. Of an umbrella. So as you inhale, I want you to imagine that your ribs sort of go forward and backwards. So there's a depth, but on the inhale, they actually also get wider. So that there's a three dimensionality to it. When I inhale, You can have your eyes open or closed as you imagine your ribs becoming an umbrella, opening up as you inhale. And gently closing around the spine as you exhale. Three more of those. Two more. Last one. And as you exhale, bring your hands together. Get them warmed. And then you can place your nice warm hands. Once they're warm enough for you, place your nice warm hands onto the front of your throat. Just be there for a moment. Let your jaw, let your chin, let your head rest down into your hands. You can even let your posture sort of shift and change. There's no reason to be up tall and erect, just allowing the posture to change. Breathing a little bit there. And then a little bit of a jaw massage. A little tapping. You can go down into your chest. 
If you're not a tapper, some people find this annoying. <laughs> some people, this is triggering to their nervous system. Maybe you're a rubber. You can just kind of give yourself a little gentle massage across the collarbone and chest. Maybe you're a holder. You can just kind of hold that there. None of them are right. Not a single one of them is right. <laughs> All of them are just what feels good for you to do today. Today, I feel like I'm a tapper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap all the way down into the belly, the arm, a little slap, just kind of waking up the nervous system. In my head, I think of this as like, oh yeah, I have an arm, got a belly, got a back, got legs, and feet. We're just gonna take and shake out our hands. Just kind of all over the place that whole body kind of shake with that. And then immediately just kind of center yourself and go back into your breathing. Noticing whatever you notice, you can let your posture shift and change. And for me, my body feels like it wants to do a little rock here. Maybe you want to stay still. I personally, my body personally, really loves the sensation of rocking. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it rock for a moment. As if my spine becomes seaweed and I'm just in an ocean current. I'm a beach guy. So for me, I'm thinking, what beach would I be on right now? Kind of warm-ish water might I be in, just kind of floating. What would I be hearing right now? That's my... Uh, comfort space when I get a little worked up being outside in general helps me and in particular the ocean the beach maybe you're a mountain person maybe you're a stream or a pool person maybe for you it's just being inside on a rocking chair sort of rocking back and forth there's not a right visual there's not a right answer it's just what what do you, what do you need <sighs> Let's start today with a practice we covered a couple of times last week. We're gonna start off with a little spatial awareness today. So just taking a look around your room, noticing what's in the room objectively. So for me, it would be plants and a mirror and a water bottle and a chair, computer stuff, camera, windows, doors, cup, mirror. And just noticing the things in the room that anyone in the room could notice. So I'm not thinking that's the chair I love or that's the plant I need to water or like just what's in the room that anyone in the room could notice. And then begin to notice the spaciousness in the room, the space between the stuff, things, uh, areas that you could move through, walk through. And just notice how much spaciousness is actually in your room. Even in the most cluttered spaces, there's still quite a bit of spaciousness. And then, whether you want your eyes opened or closed, go inside, notice the internal topography of your own experience. As for me, I'm an eyes closed person, maybe you're not. For me, as I notice what's going on inside, I want to first notice where it feels exceptionally spacious. Where would I notice spaciousness inside of my body? For me right now, it's inside of like my chest, upper belly area. That for me feels exceptionally spacious right now. And I notice it as just like expansiveness. There's like a lightness and airiness in that area. So for you, it might be important to notice not only what feels spacious, but how do I notice that it feels spacious? Anyone can do it. It's the same as literally going, there's a chair, and there's not a chair. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a practice. Then notice somewhere that feels less spacious. For me right now, it would be my right hip. You can even see it in the, in the video. This feels less spacious. It doesn't feel bad. I'm not noticing pain. I'm just noticing that it doesn't have the same quality as maybe my chest, upper belly has. So I just kind of notice, oh, that feels more congested. It feels a little more tense, it feels a little more tight. But around that area feels spacious. I notice spaciousness in my leg. I notice spaciousness in the belly here. So the spaces in between the hip 
feel more spacious. So as I notice that, it's like a softening happens inside of the hip. It's simply by noticing, huh, where am I gonna turn my attention to? The thing that feels congested and bad or the thing that feels light and open and airy. Even if it's for a moment, can I attune my awareness to the thing that I like? Just kind of be there with that. Now, these become important because this is the stuff you're actually practicing as we go through the movement. As in, this is not an exercise class. I wanna make that very, very clear. This is helping our body processes the stress cycle physically. So the movements we're doing today, it's not exercise, it's helping stress to move through and metabolize in the body. But what you're practicing is, huh, does that feel more or less spacious? Where should I move into? What should be my next choice? Not because James or anyone else says so, but because that's the thing my body feels like it needs to do next. So from there, go ahead if you're not already, lie down or sit in a chair, whatever works better for you. I'm gonna lie down. Once I'm down, I'm gonna be here. And I'm gonna take my arms and I'm gonna stretch one over my head. Now it doesn't have to be down on the floor. It doesn't have to be up. It's just stretched, and reaching. And then maybe the other one and reaching and reaching. And then I'm gonna to start to breathe with that. And I'm gonna think umbrella breath. I'm gonna think three dimensional breath. So for me, there's gonna be an inhale. <sighs> inhale. Now I'm not gonna hyperventilate, so it's not inhale, 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 inhale. It's just a stretch. I might wanna drop my legs and an exhale, come back. And an inhale. And then come back. Eventually, what we're working our way up towards is what's called a pandiculation. A pandiculation, imagine you've just woken up in the morning. How do you do that? Yawn. <sighs> stretch. It's like a stretch, yawn, breath that all coincide together. Cats do this very well. Dogs do this when they get up. Humans do do it. We just don't do it enough. So it's a fake it till you make it moment. I can stretch and breathe. <sighs> and over time. <sighs> <sighs> Maybe at some point my legs want to even stretch. Then roll over onto your side that you can watch your screen. From there, I'm just gonna collect myself into a little shape here. I can support my head, I can get a pillow, I don't need to, whatever works for you. For me, this is my right side on the ground. So I'm just gonna practice breathing into the floor. What I mean by that is as I inhale, it's as if my breath travels into my right lung and kind of like I wanna breathe or push into the floor a bit. Now, if this is enough for you, stay here, do that. For the rest of us, maybe we want to kind of open up a bit here. Wherever is touching the floor now gets the breath. So now it's not just on the right side of my lung, it's kind of on the back right side of my lung. So I'm just gonna breathe into that. If I wanted to, I could open up a little bit more, but there's no glory in opening. It's not a stretch. It's where is touching the floor, and can I breathe into that? Now, 
As I said before, this is all about what feels good for you. I can only do on film what feels good for me. My body wants to go into a pandiculation here, so. <sighs> and then restack. Then allow your chest to kind of roll forward here. So now maybe it's the front of my right lung that's towards the floor. And I'm just gonna breathe into the floor there. Again, going with what you feel, this top leg for me feels like it would be better it feels the urge, the impulse to stretch behind me. So I'm not going to second guess it. I'm just going to let it go there. One more breath. And unwind yourself. Now let's do the other side. So I can just flip over. And I can be here and just breathe. I'm breathing down into the floor. I can open up. Where feels spacious? right now where it feels less spacious for me i'm feeling again it's that right hip up into my low back that feels less spacious so i'm just going to give this an opportunity to kind of open up tip i'm now going to start to breathe as if my breath is going in and cleaning house in the right hip so for me i'm going to put my leg here because that helps to actually more here that feels supported but also stretched and I'm gonna start breathing into the area in my body that feels more congested, less spacious. One more breath of wherever you're at right now. Collect your legs, roll forward. So as you can see, the different sides of your body might need a different thing. You don't have to do the same thing to the right side that you do the left side. Once you begin to spot, huh, where do I feel spacious? Where do I not? Where can I breathe into? Where is difficult? What is sensing the floor? What's not? When you're ready, go ahead and roll onto your back. Now, last week we introduced TRE, Tension and Trauma Release Exercises. We are going to go back into the one we did last week, less explanation this week, but then we're gonna add to it. So bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees casually open. They don't need to be fully stretched, but somewhere in between fully stretched and not stretched. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to gently push the soles of my feet together. I'm going to gently squeeze my glutes. And then I'm going to lift one inch, two inch, just a little hover. And I'm going to be here. Squeezing, waiting. It's like I'm trying to create tension in the body. So that when I let go of the tension, my body might do a little shake, might do a little tremor. That's simply it releasing held contractions. What happens with stress and trauma is that our body goes into a fight or flight reflex. It holds, it clenches, or it wants to move. Because we're civilized, we don't let ourselves do that enough. And so the impulse, the urge to squeeze and move is still in the muscle. What we're doing here is acknowledging that that impulse is still there. We're giving it an opportunity to process and metabolize. Now, slowly come back down. Bring your knees together one inch, two inches, three inches, and just be there until it feels 
vibrate, like, like it wants to tremble, like it wants to vibrate, or it feels more spacious. It feels different than at the other angles. You're just going to be there. My legs want to do a little bit of a shake here, so I'm just going to let them do a little bit of a vibration. Now, last week, that's where we ended. That was the, that was the point of it. If you want, if you're like, this is weird, I don't like to, <laughs> I don't like to shimmer or trimmer and shake and, and all of that, slide your legs straight, flex your feet flat and rest. This may be enough for you. This may be, it's not physically difficult, it's emotionally difficult to go, oh, look at that, I feel shaky. For the rest of us, open back up, squeeze, lift. Just gonna be here. The hips, the pelvis, the legs should feel less spacious. There's a contraction going on. Notice where you do feel spacious and can you just allow that to soften? And then come back down, legs come together, one inch, two inches until you feel vibration. There should be more shimmy shake going on. And if there's not, give it time. It sometimes takes a while to yield or to allow yourself to tremor. Then open back up one last round. Squeeze, push. Breathing, softening where you do feel spacious, noticing where you don't, come back down. Bring your knees closer together. I got a nice shake and tremor going on, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. It's like my body's shaking off stress in the same way that we shook our hands earlier. <sighs> then ground your feet. Open up your feet as wide as your mat or a little bit wider than you are. From there, push down into your feet, squeeze your glutes a bit. This is different than how I teach in Move Lab. For this, we're really wanting that extra contraction. Then you're gonna do a little bit of a lift and I'm going to keep my feet planted and I'm just gonna gently start to squeeze my knees toward each other. Pushing, squeezing, trying to bring my knees a little closer together. I can already feel the shake going on. Grounding. Bring my feet totally together. Open up my knees one inch, two inch, until I get a shake. Tremor, vibration, release. Now I'm not making myself shake. This is just how my body wants to move right now. Totally natural, totally normal. It's like when you it's like if you've been in an accident and you go through shock or you've seen movies where people experience shock, that's their body trying to metabolize the stress of what's happened. You are holding on to that all the time. This is just an opportunity to go, oh, this is my time to process. Then opening up your feet. Let's do one more of those. I'm gonna lift, bring my knees closer together. and come down. Bring my feet together, let my knees open up a bit, and just let that sort of vibrate and shake. <sighs> when 
when you're ready for it to be done, you can slide your legs straight, flex your feet, and we'll just windshield wipe. We're just gonna let the body move. So we kind of warmed up our nervous system. We opened up or released some tension through the ribs, through the shoulder area, through the breathing mechanisms, through the hips and the legs. Bring your knees together, drop them over to the side and go ahead and sit up. Rock side to side for a moment. Just let your body relax, soften and just notice Whatever it is you notice, sometimes the expectation is, oh, I should feel better here. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe you feel a little more certain. Maybe, maybe you went a little too far today, and that's important information. Maybe you feel amazing right now, also important information. What am I going to take with me? What am I going to leave behind? Look around the room, kind of orient yourself in your space. <sighs> Let's do a little sounding practice. So we're going to all do an inhale and you're going to hum. I don't care if it's low pitched, if it's loud, if it's high pitched, if it's open mouth, if it's closed mouth. But that humming helps to stimulate the vagus nerve, the nerve of experience that runs through your body, that tells you, are you supported? Are you safe? Are you unsafe? Is this dangerous? Is it okay to be here? Humming helps to retune that. Singing helps to retune that. So. We're gonna hum today. Take a nice deep inhale and hum. Again. One more. Um, umbrella breath. Now I said we were going to end with a little meditation today. This is a word meditation. This comes from psychological fitness, the work of Dr. Mark Atkinson. This is the freedom technique. So I want you to go inside and notice where it feels spacious in your body. How would you recognize that? What has been the practice for the last half hour? Where do I feel spaciousness? And then I want you to tell yourself in your own mind or out loud, I am spaciousness and freedom. I am spacious and freedom. I am spaciousness or spacious, whatever works for you, and freedom. Now, for some of us, inside your inner coach is saying, yes, yes, you are. And then for at least one or two of us out there, your inner coach is saying, no, you're not. You are not spacious. You are still contracted. You are in pain. This is stupid. So your cue is I am resistance to spaciousness and also freedom. I'm resistance to spaciousness and freedom. So play with it. I am spaciousness. I am spacious and freedom. I am resistance to spaciousness or freedom. You could notice where you feel less spacious. Take your attention there and say to yourself, I'm spacious and freedom. Then if I go down to sort of this right leg, it's like, no, you're not. But if I come up here in my own chest, in my own heart, in my own belly area, and I say the words, I'm spaciousness and freedom, all of a sudden inside there's a subtleness. There's like a, a, a very nuanced knowingness that says, yeah, yeah, you are. Where in your body are you spacious? Where are you resistant to being spacious? We're gonna take this freedom technique and keep playing with it. I think starting with spaciousness feels very, very approachable. We're gonna keep moving forward with this. Like I said, these are not cumulative classes although we reference and we reference and we reference. So just continue to rock and play. I am spaciousness and freedom. I'm resistance to spaciousness and freedom. What are you going to take with you from this class? What are you going to leave behind? 
Where in your body did you notice spaciousness or not? What were you resistant to today? And is it dumb? Is it silly? Is it something not for you? Or is there just an unpracticed thing going on there? That's for you to sort of self-discover. So I thank you for your time. This class has been really well received and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. The more feedback we get, the more this class sort of becomes nuanced to your needs. So in the comments today, let me know where in your body do you notice stress? Where did you notice spaciousness? Where did you notice resistance to spaciousness? Where do you need more support moving through that? Now we are going um, bigger and bigger and bigger with more and more specifics, but it will be really informative for me, for us to know how can we support you in the stress reset class. Thank you for your time. We hope we see you tomorrow for Move Lab. And what is today? Yes, tomorrow for Move Lab and Friday for another stress reset. We cannot thank you enough from Community Fit and here at the studio. I'm James. Really appreciate your time. I will stick around for some questions. Raymond will stick around if you have any questions about the programming itself. Alicia will be back with us tomorrow. In the meantime, have a great day. Thank you. Let's see. Stress and tightness in the hips. Resistance to spaciousness res resonated. Yes, exactly. Oh, my body felt so good. Great. I realized that I hold my stress in my shoulders. I always thought it was my neck. Right, exactly. Those are so, so, so interrelated. Let's see, what else do we have? Stress, shoulders, low back, great. Glad you're enjoying the information, I appreciate that. More work between the shoulder blades, got it. Understood. Stress in the neck, stress under scapulas and shoulders. Stress in my shoulders, but not anywhere else. Great, perfect. Things that stressed me out this morning kept coming to mind, got it. Someone, it looks like there was a question about this class. Um, uh, will it help with migraines? That is a really good question. I mean, migraines come from an assortment of uh, different stimulus through the body. I think maybe an appropriate way to answer that is this class, um, uh, at its best, this class is going to stop your migraines. At its worst, this class is going to help you discern where the migraines are coming from, what are some triggers, and where do I need to go next in my search of how to um, be in better relationship with my body so the migraines happen less and less. I know, it's sort of skirting around the answer. Uh, okay, thank you so much, James. James, you have been very inspiring, resourceful. Could you please share some some of the i don't understand that go go gig exercises or techniques lying down on tummy instead of back got it i appreciate the sounding and time to soothe the vagus nerve you're welcome on that okay so uh yes my email address super easy if you just go to jamescrater.com uh, my email is james at jamescrater.com. But if you just go to jamescrater.com, you can email me directly from there. It's super, super easy. Where can we see the recordings of these? Um, you can contact Raymond right now and he can get you the recordings. What we are working on is a full YouTube library. We are in process on that to get a full library of all of the classes that will be archived session by session so that you will have access to that anytime, anywhere. That is in the works. In the meantime, you can connect with Raymond on here and he can make sure to get you those recordings. Great, okay. So uh, what I'm hearing and what we'll sort of cover is more stuff in between the shoulders, which ironically really has little to do with between the shoulders. Typically, typically it's got a lot to do with what's going on in the legs and the hips and getting that to process because the shoulders and the neck and the jaw area is pretty self-organizing. So if you are someone who has a lot of stress in your shoulders and upper back, 
keep doing some of these lower body things and see where that goes. Um, we will give more acute stuff for shoulders and uh, we'll tackle some stuff for being on the belly. We had some stuff last week of actually being on the belly. So I think it was Friday's class from last week had a lot of belly stuff. So that's there for you. I thank you so, so, so much. Uh, putting these on YouTube is an awesome idea. Thank you. Um, great. Okay, guys. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. If you liked Stress Reset and you are not coming to Move Lab, come to Move Lab. Move Lab has, a, it's a play oriented movement class. And so many of the things that we're learning here, we learn to build up endurance around that stuff in Move Lab. It's like the exercise portion of what it's the uh, repetition, repetition, getting your reps in version of what we're doing here. So hopefully we'll see you there. And if not, I'll see you back here on Friday. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one.